So to wrap up this chapter, we're going to look at a very specific example what especially coupled LP circuits could possibly be used for, which is to combat so-called burst erasures. So what is a burst erasure? Well, we have the following scenario that we're looking at. We have a couple of spatial positions. For instance, we have spatial position, let's draw them. So we have spatial position T minus one, we have spatial position P, spatial position P plus one. And we lose a complete spatial position. So it's not transmitted at all. So all the bits in this spatial position are erased, are fully, fully, fully erased. And we assume that the other spatial positions, we have no erasures. So we have um, epsilon t minus one is equal to zero, epsilon t plus one is equal to zero, and the erasure probability at spatial position t is equal to one. So what could be a possible scenario? Possible scenario could be you put every spatial position into a packet and you put you transmit this packet over a network. And there is a packet loss because there is a congestion in the network or something else happens and this packet is lost. This complete spatial position is lost somewhere in the network. Another example is you put the um, different spatial positions on different hard drives. So you put this one on a hard drive T minus one, you put this on a hard drive T plus one, you put this on a hard drive T, and one of the hard drive fails, and you need to recover the data. So we ask ourselves the question, when can we recover the data if of this spatial position if all the bits inside the spatial position are erased? And this is what we're going to look at in this specific example. So um, this is just one of those unique properties that we're going to highlight. And the scenario that we're going to look at is the following. So all spatial positions are correctly received, except spatial position TB, which is completely erased. That's a so-called burst erasure. And the advantages or the applications are packet loss in data networks, server failures in distributed storage, or, and this is actually where we came from, or what motivated us to study this, if we look at DSL systems, like digital subscriber lines, what you have at home, internet over the twisted pair copper lines, there you have so-called impulse noise. So there is noise that is impulsive, and over a short sequence of time, there's a lot of noise this can have a lot of uh, different sources. Usually it's uh, if you switch on electrical appliance and there's some switching process and this, um, there's noise that is seen in the twisted pair line. So there is impulse noise in DSL system and this means that for a short period of time we have very, very high um, noise power and this essentially erases complete spatial position. Question we ask ourselves, when can we recover from this burst? And to do this, we first look at the density evolution. So we look at density evolution. And we start with the density evolution update equation that we see here. This is the density evolution update equation. And now we have epsilon t. So epsilon t is one if we are in the bursty spatial position and it's zero otherwise. So if we have in the spatial position that is erased, we have an epsilon of one and otherwise we have an epsilon of zero. So it means all the other spatial positions, they are not erased, we know them. We only need to look at spatial position TB. So we only need to consider the case t equals tb, and we have c of tb, epsilon is equal to one, so we don't need to put it, and this is the case, so just the update equation. 
So now we know that only Xi TB, so we know that C TB is different or it's larger than zero, and C TB plus I is equal to zero if I is um, from one L and not TB. So all the other Cs, they are actually equal to zero. This is shown also here. So we only need to look at the case where he, here we have Ctb because all the others are equal to zero. This implies that J must be equal to I. Otherwise, this is not possible. Otherwise, we just have zero here. There is no contribution to the sum. So we only need to look at the case where j is equal to i. So we only need to consider the case j is equal to i. And then we have the following update equation. So one of the sums vanishes, and we only have the first sum, 1 minus 1 over w, c tb to power l minus 1. And this is not depending on i anymore. So there is no dependency on i. So we can just um, move the sum inside. And um, we see that this is equal to 1 minus 1 minus 1 over w, because here we take w times the same sum, then we divide by w. Just uh, remove sum because it will not have an effect. Just taking the sum over w times of the same thing, we'll multiply by w and then dividing by w. So this is 1 minus 1 over w, c tb l minus 1, dc power dc minus 1, power dv minus 1. So now we make a change of variable. Now we say kappa l is equal 1 over w times ctb. We don't want this 1 over w here. We want some kappa over it. Okay, so then we get w times kappa because that's c. It's 1 minus 1 over kappa power integration l minus 1 power dc minus 1 power dv minus 1. Then we divide both sides by 1 over w. And we get kappa L is equal to 1 over W times 1 minus 1 minus kappa L minus 1 power dc minus 1 power dv minus 1. This looks very, very familiar. What is this? This is exactly the update equation of a DVDC LDPC code over a binary erasure channel with erasure probability 1 over w. This could be some, some epsilon, epsilon tilde. So when does this converge? This guy, kappa L, will converge to zero if and only if epsilon tilde is smaller than the threshold. We can say that kappa L will go to zero if and only if epsilon tilde is smaller or equal, actually smaller because otherwise with equality we are on a fixed point, then epsilon star of the DVDC code. This is equivalent to saying that 1 over W is smaller than epsilon star dvdc. So we can say, we can give a condition when we can recover this completely missing spatial position in terms of the threshold of the underlying code. It allows us to formulate a, a theorem. So what I just said is the following, we can recover if um, 
So we can recover the update equation of the DVDC LPC code. And kappa L converges if 1 over W is smaller than the threshold of the code. So we have a spatially coupled LPC code. L minus 1 spatial positions are erased. Are not erased, they are received completely correctly without erasures. And one spatial position is completely erased. But then we can recover the spatial position if W is larger than 1 over epsilon star. Star is the decoding threshold underlying regular DVDC LEPC code. This is a very nice result that relates essentially the uncoupled with the coupled code in a very, very simple way. So this concludes this chapter. Here you have some links to uh, relevant literature. And um, now we wrap up essentially our discussion on LDPC codes and family of LDPC codes. The next thing we're going to look at is something called polar 